Hi there, I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video I'll be reviewing the Microsoft Surface Pro tablet. The Surface Pro is a really cool tablet computer that you can use to create digital artwork and graphic design. And it has a built-in Wacom digitizer, which means that you can draw with pen pressure. Now, it doesn't work like this right out of the box. You'll have to install some software to get it working this way. But in the second part of this video, I'll show you how to do that. In the first part of this video, I'll show you the technical specs, the pros and cons of the tablet, and how it compares to other pressure sensitive tablets like it. And in the last part of the video, I'll do some more demonstrations of drawing with Corel Painter and Photoshop. I recently purchased the Surface Pro because I wanted to replace my aging and bulky laptop. I wanted something more compact and discreet that I could use to make paintings outside the studio. Because I have an adequate desktop computer and a Cintiq 24HD, I didn't want to invest too much money in a secondary computer. After doing a lot of research on the various tablets available, I decided on the Surface Pro because it was affordable and has excellent specs. Not only is it touch sensitive like the Intuos Pro, Cintiq Touch, iPad, and Cintiq Companion, it's also a very powerful Windows 8 computer with a built-in Wacom digitizer that supports pen pressure. A desktop computer is generally the best type of workstation for artists and designers but tablet computers are becoming more and more practical for everyday use. The biggest advantage is that you can use a tablet to create artwork anywhere without being tethered to a desk and electrical outlets. Besides painting on it, you can use a tablet as a portable portfolio to display your artwork. You can easily share your work with the world by publishing it on the internet using Wi-Fi. All of this can be done on a single portable device that is no bigger than a small sketchbook. It's really amazing technology. Now let's take a look at the specifications of the Surface Pro, as well as the pros and cons. It probably goes without saying, but the Surface Pro is much smaller than my old Toshiba laptop. It's ultra portable and can be handheld or self-standing on a desktop using its built-in kickstand. The Surface Pro's Intel i5 processor is much faster than my laptop was, and seems to keep up with everything I've thrown at it without slowing down. I have not tested it with 3D games, but the 3D functions in Photoshop CC work flawlessly. The Surface Pro works just as well as my desktop does when working on large paintings in Corel Painter X3, even while multitasking other applications in the background. Photoshop CC effects and 3D features work very fast as well. Besides painting, I can run any Windows application. That's a major advantage for me because I can rely on the Surface Pro as a fully functional computer. Depending on how you use the tablet, the battery lasts around three to six hours, which is pretty good. My laptop only lasted an hour or two before running out of juice. My iPad 2 battery lasted around six to 10 hours, but was not very powerful or capable. The Surface Pro is fairly simple in its design. It's a lot like the iPad in that it's rather discreet and does not have obtrusive or distracting design features. The Cintiq Companion definitely looks like a drawing tablet and does not have the same low profile appearance as the Surface Pro or iPad. The Surface Pro screen is very nice. The image is bright, sharp, and the colors are vivid. I have not noticed any color accuracy issues. The Adobe 1998 RGB color profile installed and works great. As with most displays, the screen is glossy. Glare is minimized because the screen is very bright. The Surface Pro uses a solid state hard drive, which is a newer kind of hard drive. It does not use a spinning disk like the older types of hard drives, so your data loads much faster and is less likely to get damaged. The Surface Pro goes from off to Windows fully active in a matter of seconds. Photoshop and other applications load almost instantly. I chose the 128GB version, which is not a whole lot of storage space by today's standards, but more than enough space to install software and store data. An external hard drive or cloud storage can be used to store additional files. The Surface Pro has a display port, which can be used to extend the Surface Pro display onto a larger monitor or HDTV. The Surface Pro has one USB 3.0 port, which can be used to attach flash drives, external hard drives, and other peripherals like a mouse or a game controller. A USB hub can be purchased to add additional USB ports to the Surface Pro. There's also a port on the Surface Pro for a micro SDXC card. 
which can extend the storage capacity of the Surface Pro. This is particularly handy for photographers who would like to edit and store photos on a small portable device they can bring along with their camera. The Surface Pro runs Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop flawlessly. Now we'll take a look at some of the cons. Although it is small, the Surface Pro is rather heavy for its size. Only two pounds, but it feels heavier. It's too heavy to hold comfortably in one hand for very long, and works better laying on your lap or freestanding on a table. While I'm not going to put it through any stress tests, the Surface Pro's magnesium shell feels well-built and durable. The Surface Pro does not come with an external keyboard, though an on-screen keyboard and handwriting functions are available in Windows 8. There is an optional keyboard cover you can purchase, but it's over $100 and not very good quality. I decided to go with the Logitech Wireless Bluetooth Keyboard, which was around $70 and much better quality. Adding the keyboard made it much easier to use the tablet for typing, but it also nullifies the advantage of portability by making it necessary to carry around a keyboard in addition to the tablet. The Surface Pro doesn't have any external shortcut keys like the Cintiq Companion, and initially I bought the wireless keyboard because typing was difficult, but after trying out Painter, I became aware that not having access to keyboard shortcuts like Tab, for instance, was going to make painting very difficult. After purchasing the keyboard, I came across a solution to add touchscreen shortcuts for Tab, Shift, Control, and more. This removed the necessity of the keyboard for painting, but the keyboard's still very useful when I need to do a lot of typing. The stock pen that comes with the Surface Pro is kind of cheap compared to the Wacom art pens. One can upgrade to the Bamboo Stylus Feel, made by Wacom, which is marginally better, but still does not support pen tilt. Nevertheless, the stock pen works fine for painting and does not hinder my ability to make great artwork. The weight of the stock pen is very light, almost like a mechanical pencil. This could be an advantage for those who find the Wacom pens too bulky. There's an eraser on the end of the pen, which will erase, but I find it does not work as well as the eraser on my Cintiq pen. The stock pen's nib is replaceable, but it does not come with additional nibs. The bamboo stylus feel does come with several replacement nibs, but lacks an eraser. I don't use the eraser when painting, so it's not much of a concern to me. Though the upgrade to Windows 8.1 made it less of a pain to use, I'm still not fully satisfied with Windows 8 as it pertains to tablet computers. The problem is that when the Surface Pro is inactive, it goes to sleep to conserve battery. This is good for saving power, but it means that things like alarms and music will stop playing once the tablet screen is turned off. I didn't have this issue with my iPad, because I could turn the screen off and music would keep playing. The alarm would also go off when the iPad was asleep. Perhaps there's some workaround for Windows 8, but for me the alarm apps are useless unless I leave the tablet screen on and plugged in. My second gripe is that Windows 8 comes preloaded with a bunch of junk applications that eat up your storage and your memory. You'll have to spend some time removing unwanted apps to free up your available storage and RAM. My third gripe is that Windows 8 is a little hard to use at first. I had to look at several YouTube videos and websites to even figure out how to navigate the operating system. There is plenty of info out there to help you, but you have to locate it yourself. Once you figure out how to do it, navigating is fairly simple. The screen on the Surface Pro is only 10.6 by 6.8 inches, which is a little small vertically, but still adequate for painting. It may take some getting used to if you've been working on a large screen. Text may be a little hard to see for those with limited eyesight. However, the size of the screen fonts can be enlarged, and there are lots of accessibility features to make the tablet easier to use for those with impairments. The small screen could be an advantage for those who want a more compact device. The built-in Wacom digitizer on the Surface Pro works well, except when the pen hovers near the far corners of the tablet. Near the corners, the mouse cursor strays away from the pen tip slightly. This isn't enough of a nuisance to bother me, and I've read that a driver update may be on the way to address the issue. The front and rear cameras on the Surface Pro stink. If you're buying a tablet for use as a camera, this is not a good option. While the still photos are terrible, the video does work well for video chat and Skype. It records video in 720 HD, which I find pretty handy. I prefer to use a professional camera for photography, so the built-in camera quality isn't a major disappointment. In the context of doing paintings outdoors, the Surface Pro cameras will suffice for capturing reference photos. The Surface Pro gets very warm when it's used for a long period of time. Not warm enough to burn you, but it could cause some discomfort if you leave it sitting on your lap for a while. 
The same can be said of most tablets, as they all produce heat. I fancied the idea of getting a waterproof sleeve for my tablet, but I decided against it because I read of overheating issues when ventilation is poor. Now we'll take a look at how the Surface Pro compares to other pressure-sensitive tablets, like the Cintiq Companion and the iPad. The Surface Pro lacks the pen tilt and express keys of the Cintiq Companion, but I don't see that as being a major disadvantage, especially when the Cintiq Companion is considerably more expensive than the Surface Pro. The Cintiq Companion's pen is far superior, as is the screen and hardware. For most people, the Surface Pro will be powerful enough to make digital art. The Cintiq is faster in terms of power, but it would only be useful for running advanced 3D and video rendering applications. Painter and Photoshop don't require much power, and the Surface has plenty. Overall, the Cintiq is definitely better in terms of being geared more towards painting, but the Surface Pro is a more functional as a computer. I have a Cintiq 24 HD in my studio, so I was more interested in the computer than the screen. Previous to my purchase of the Surface Pro, I had been painting on an iPad 2, but I found that the software available on iTunes does not hold a candle to Curl Painter X3. The iPad 2 also did not support pen pressure, which was a major disadvantage when painting. Software options are very limited in iTunes, and for Macs in general. Most of what I use on a daily basis does not work with iPad's operating system. The iPad seemed to work great as an alarm clock and an MP3 player, but it was too rudimentary for painting and design. The iPad also does not have a USB port, and cannot utilize USB peripherals, another disadvantage in my opinion. There is a more powerful and more current version of the Surface Pro, called the Surface Pro 2, with much better specs, but I find that the first generation Surface Pro is more than capable of doing everything I need it to. I know there are many other tablets out there with Wacom digitizers, but the Surface seemed to stand out the most. It was easy to find information and reviews from other artists who have used it for digital painting with Corel Painter and Photoshop, so I knew it was a good option. I'm not going to say that the Surface Pro is the best option, but it meets my expectations. I found it difficult to compare tablets online, and most were not affordable. Because the Surface Pro 2 is now available, the price of the Surface Pro is dropping. I got a good sale price from my local Best Buy. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the Surface Pro won't work for digital painting right out of the box. You'll have to make a few software modifications to make the pen pressure work, but it's really easy to do. In the next segment of this video, I'll explain how to modify the Surface Pro to optimize it for digital painting.